India is going to organize a monumental uh, conference on uh, human rights and it is uh, a global conference. To talk about the state of human rights, to talk about the conference, I am joined by the chairperson of the NHRC, National Human Rights Commission, Justice Retired Mr. Arun Mishra. Mr. Mishra, welcome to Times Now. Uh, I wish to ask you one uh, question to begin with to understand the concept. What is it uh, that is so crucial in today's day and age? I know that climate change is an important part of your discussions and it's a very uh, serious and uh, upcoming challenge to human rights. Uh, other than that, what is the significance of this global conference that you are organizing, Mr. Mishra? Actually, we are reviewing our entire functioning of last 30 years. This is the first session with respect to the what we have achieved in last 30 years and what is the way ahead. So in that, uh, we are going to discuss our best practices, what is the role played by NHRIs, in which field they have really served the for the upliftment of the downtrodden class and to make a leg egalitarian society. Apart from that, we are going to discuss what is the way ahead, how NHRIs can contribute in attaining sustainable development goals, how they can compel their government, how they can compel the business to meet the obligations which have been fixed with respect to climatic change and all that up to 2030 and then zero carbon emission by 2070. So this now you see then another issue which is going to be deliberated upon is this that now internet is, is going to stay. It has proved very useful. But at the same time 96% of cyber space is dark web and now it is being used to commit most of the cyber crimes. Now traditional crimes are no more there. Now e-frauds, bank frauds, that, uh, hack, uh, hacking of data, demand of ransom in cryptocurrency, you cannot trace where the ransom is going. And then child sexual abuse, slavery, gaming, so many things. Everything is taking, every crime is taking place virtually in cyberspace. It has become a menace rather, and it is ac across the border. Unless we cooperate internationally, different countries, and devise common joint strategy. See these intermediaries of internet service providers must be held responsible to take down the offensive content from the web. When you are earning a revenue by your f uploading the contents or your OTT platform or something like that. It becomes your responsibility that your space should not be used for commission the crime against the humanity. And particularly we are we have held recently a conference on child sexual abuse material, which is there in abundance. Live streaming of the offense against a child is taking place which is known to everybody that this offense is taking place and is being live streamed. It can be stopped. It is not that it cannot be stopped. Technology is there to stop it. But you see, there's no willpower to stop it. They want to earn the revenue. What role can you play in it? What role can we, Human we, Rights we Commission can play? play we, in it? we are working seriously and we have virtually on the, we have finalized the ad advisory based upon our national conference which we held in which international uh, experts also participated. We are going to issue the very the same very soon. Now we will be asking the stakeholders detailed guidelines we will be issuing and in that we probably feel that uh, we can ensure that human rights violation does not take place 
on the cyber space particularly with respect to child part which we are dealing with in that advisory and if that is used that can be used safely against as well against the other commission of other offenses too justice mishra climate change is a very big uh, issue staring us right in the face now there is no more turning our faces away from that challenge mm. and large understanding of global body of work is that it is going to impact the poorest and the poor the most uh it also includes their human rights as as defined uh you know lately but there is a sense justice mishra across the world and more so in developing world that human rights somehow are reserved for the rich and the mighty and the influential what is it that your commission is doing in today's day and age at 2023 uh where human rights are such a big issue and issues like climate change are very closely intertwined with them to ensure that the poor get their human rights i mean that's the challenge right definitely you are right that climate affects the poorest of poor mo migrations taking place due to displacements are taking place due to climatic change their drought situation they have to shift their residences they have to abandon their agriculture operation and shift to other places then displacements are there due to flood situation sea level is also rising you see and then there is a extreme rain or no rains so worse sufferer in this scenario by climatic changes definitely down to down class we have to care for it we ensure the resettlement of them we ensure that we have interfered in several cases and there several cases are pending with as with respect to pharma suicide also that there should be some ameliorative scheme to give them certain relief when they are in the need of it you see that is compulsion on the state to give them the need uh, aid when it is needed by them you see this, that is called distributive justice it's not the distribution of the benefits you see this due to justice concept is there and it is compulsion upon the state and court can also compel and hrc can also require the state government to meet the needs basic needs of the people when they require it due to displacement due to these kind of situation so so do you think justice uh, mishra that climate change and uh, human rights and uh, disturbance due to that requires a specific kind of intervention from you or specific kind of a fund from the state government where you can direct that pay the compensation like in various cases you, nhrc has done in the past not only this that uh, we have to pay the compensation but uh, if you are going to deal with the info environment and you are going to achieve the trying to achieve the sustainable development goal in the process of oh, you see changing the fuel to switching over to bio, biofuel and uh, you are not using fossil fuel anymore who will be the sufferer the poor person will be the sufferer those who are miners in involved in the mining will be the sufferer so you have to arrange for their alternative employment too while achieving your sustainable development goals so they are the sufferer both the ways and then you see we have to care for them in uh, so many ways and then let me share with you we had uh, received 8000 more than 8700 cases of environment so far and uh, most of them have been decided and uh, we have secured the closure of uh, polluting industries to the pollution control board we direct them to inspect and then take appropriate step and report back to us if they find that industry is polluting and not following the no emission norms they close it till the time it meets those requirement tertiary treatment plant or secondary treatment plant whatever it is or whatever is lacking so they are doing, we are doing the needful and our process is very fast you see within a month you will have the result within 6 weeks you will have you will have the result so that is the way we are securing the 
environmental justice also and then it is not that we direct the closure you see we ensure that through bodies we achieve it and the 46 cases are still pending out that nature reports are being called in that i am very and glad i am very glad mr mishra just mishra that you bring me to this uh, point that uh, you have sought reports and uh, you uh, ensured action in almost above 95 percent cases but uh, there is a again uh, impression just as i said that there is an impression that human rights are only for the rich mighty and influential there is an impression that nhrc issues notices to the state governments over the various cases of violations of human rights but nothing comes out of it it's not correct to say that nothing comes out of it actually our work is silent work and then we ensure that uh, whenever there is a compl complaint of violation of human right we do the justice in those cases and we wherever we find that there is a violation of human right we direct compens recommend the compensation and uh, invariably it is paid and also departmental action is taken in case a police officer has or in performance of the duty even criminal prosecution has been ordered by us and uh, there is, has been criminal prosecution of several incumbents for violation of their rights now recently we have asked uh, several local bodies to provide safety, safety gears to the workers in involved in the septic tank cleaning yeah manual that. scavenging it manual man, not that is not called manual scavenging precisely i will say that they, they are involved in the hazardous work okay so it is the duty of the local bodies to provide them the safety gears and cons uh, particularly when we issue we have issued an advisory on 24th of september 2021 and still there if they are not providing it so it will become culpable negligence on their part and we have asked a number of bodies such bodies corp local bodies and even officials why you should not be criminally prosecuted why you are not providing safety gears to these incumbents who are involved in the hazardous work just and, sure. uh, it should be rather mechanical cleaning yes mostly it should be now like government that. has accepted that advisory and it has advised the local bodies to go for mechanical right. cleaning i am happy to share that with you justice misha you come from the apex of judiciary like your predecessors you know you come from right of the apex of the judiciary from the supreme court of this country uh, where obviously as designed by the constitution mm -hmm. judges justices enjoy enormous powers you think uh, at nhrc nhrc enjoys enough powers or do you think more teeth is required to this given to be given to this body particularly justice misha i ask this because unlike the past issues like climate change will not remain will not remain confined to individuals they will become a problem of large settlements of human beings large populations will be impacted a large number of people will face challenges which have never been faced before by the humanity and hence i ask you this question that do you think that currently the powers that the nhrc enjoys uh, are enough to ensure that climate justice for them actually according to me if we compare from the court and then nhrc here i feel that power is little more to begin with to initiate the cases sumoto also there is enough power whatever you feel that uh, this is the field where you should bring the change you can pick up that field you can take that subject for improvement and draw, draw sumoto processing and proceed that this you cannot do in the courts our jurisdiction is very tight in that whatever points are raised in a particular matter we have to deal with that matter only and then the here the subjects are particularly when we talk of human rights violation in general provision in the section 12 where other human rights violation very it has been interpreted by supreme court that there, it is very wide powers connotation of this expression is very wide so and then see no more teeth is required i feel that this our commission our institute is the best in the world it has so much power so many powers we have invested 
independent investigation wing we can investigate where the police has failed and we have our investigation team in fact is investigating where the police has failed and they are finding the, the uh, real cause and real accused and who how this offense took place there was uh, let me share with you there is one case in which the existence of one woman was denied by a government that no such person exists our team went there not only found the existence of that person that, that woman existed but she was found alive also so this is the way our team goes and then post poll violence and who stays the in bihar and then i am happy to share that uh, bihar government has after our team visited there and recommended compensation government has issued a general order that it will be paying compensation of 4 lakh with effect from 2016 to all those who have died in whose trees this is the impact of our you see work to all those who have died in hooch uh, hooch uh, in bihar after 2016 that is a big impact no 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 post mortem report is necessary that is for that impact. order of the government you see particularly because mr nitish kumar government similar, similar, has been facing a lot of criticism about yes. that nahi no, you see and then uh, silicosis if we take it several governments have framed schemes with yes. respect to not only with the payment of pension but compensation also and compensation appointment is also being offered by several state governments very happy situation is there and then we begin it that you please frame the scheme now in the cases of uh, suicide also for prevention we have issued an advisory recently there should not be ligature material you know any bathrooms etc latrines etc so that person can Hang you're talking about the under trial suicide under trial prisoners under prison trial. condition because suicide is the most major cause of uh, death in the judicial Pre- judicial custody otherwise this is natural death suicide is the major cause of death you see unnatural death uh, uh, unnatural death justice mishra i am glad that you bring me to this point of international and we are paying compensation in that yes in suicide i am again happy that you bring me to this point of uh, NHRC our NHRC that is the Indian NHRC having mm-hmm. tremendous powers compared to international forums recently justice mishra there has been a problem there is a global alliance which has deferred the accreditation of NHRC twice and because of which your representation at the UN general assembly of for human rights also is in jeopardy what are you doing about it and why, how has this impasse come about actually what they are insisting they have insisted in 2017 also yes 2017 they asked that you change the method of selection of your candidates you see there should be applications and all that i feel that uh, though nobody prevents from filing application and uh, is taking the claim but you see if you are having the post reserved for chief justice of india or judges of the supreme court or the chief justice nobody is going to apply they will never apply for any post you select them or don't select them if you are in such kind of composition which is nowhere in parallel has parallel in the world then you see your procedure has to be little there is safeguards are also there and then person from civil society are also being considered there are posts available for them and our woman member was really activist she was a lawyer she has retired only last last year so it's not that that uh, person from the society are not coming to the nhrc so you think it's more of an administrative issue rather than uh, talking about the quality of work that you do it is uh, if you talk of quality i should not be misunderstood that uh, the bulk of the complaints which we are dealing with is in parallel in the world one lakh more than one lakh complaint per year online system several even from gangri people have come to learn this this system understand our system of online management of the complaint how we are doing how we are managing these complaints and this is the best system in the world you see not only nhrc is there you see we have six uh, roughly 580 employees and then we have as shrc is also state human rights commissions also they are also working in every state so our network probably other 
commissions in the world and other uh, ombudsmen where they have been appointed, they are not even parallel to our one state commission, you see. So this is a respect for human rights which we have by our deep-rooted culture, cultural tradition from the uh, time of Rig Veda, you see, 5,000 years back. That is the tradition which is going on and that is the way, same way it is reflected in our constitution as well as in our act, human so, rights uh, protection. Justice Mishra, rights. let me then again come to one controversy that keeps erupting again and again. That is about, you know, that the statutory bodies or the constitutional bodies or the bodies which have uh, you know, independent powers like National Commission for Women, National Commission for Minorities, National Human Rights Commission are also increasingly becoming political, that they have not remained apolitical, that uh, when it is one side, they will issue notices quickly and they will ask for uh, inquiry commissions, reports, etc. But when it is the other side, which is the government side of the day, uh, they become somewhat lackadaisical. Uh, is it true? Would you agree with this or will you not agree with this? I do not agree at all because for the reason, because if we see from a color glasses, everything will be in that color, one. Number two, if you see the data, see the annual report of our commission, what action we have taken in which state which state has bear the burden of of payment of compensation you will find the correct thing correct data correct record so this is a perception where people bring the political kind of cases and they expect political results these are these are not the institution for political gains you see we are for serving the human rights we we serve the really those class which requires our help you see not for political purposes True, either for this side or for that side. So to consider and us our work functioning from political tangle and angle is probably is not understanding the real job and uh, what we are doing on ground level. And uh, that can be, our report is placed on the legislative assembly every year uh, of the state as well as in the parliament here. So that report can be seen by anybody, what we are doing, what we have done in which state, whether it can be said to be political, factually speak. Justice Mishra, I, let me ask you my final question. Um, uh, the fact is that you have now had a significant tenure, tenure here, you know, you've had, uh, spent a significant period of time. You, you are also an eminent jurist, you are a man of law, you are a man of constitution. You, do you think you, you, you are happy with the work that the bodies like Human Rights Commission, etc., are able to do in this country uh, to aid the poor, downtrodden, and the needy? Because that's the whole idea. You see, I will say that uh, though we are working, we issue advisory, but uh, still we have to pursue it. That, is, that should not be there. Once the advisory has been issued, it should be orderly followed by the everybody. But you see, until unless we direct again and again feed, to take the feedback and this and that, and again, uh, if I tell you about the mental hospitals and then laws with respect to which of amendment which we sought of Hansen's disease, persons with her suffering with the Hansen's disease, is still there are more than 90 laws in our country which are discriminatory to them. Either you are suffering with that disease, you will go out of the body, executive body of a particular uh, university or something like that. We have asked them to modify and remove this discriminatory part because it is no more infectious once particular medicines are taken by those persons. But still, though some states have responded, but lot is required to be done so I feel that uh, with respect to mental hospitals also a lot is required to be done particularly in the field that uh, those persons who have recovered our we have a wholesome act of uh, mental health act 2017 that requires person who has recovered should not be re detained in uh, retained in the hospital should not be kept in the hospital either he should be sent back to the house he has a right to live with the community. 
or in case family is not accepting then he has to keep to be kept in half a homes but implementation of this act is not still very efficient so we have asked now the hospitals to send them back and particularly in maharashtra thane mental hospital we have asked director general of police as well as chief secretary and uh, other incumbents those who are in charge of that and our investigation team of nhrc also to help them go back to their houses there are more than 200 persons who have who are fit but are being kept in mental hospital there are 2000 persons in india who are being kept for years together in the mental hospital in spite of having been recovered and fit to go back to home it's a tedious work mr uh, justice mishra i wish you all the luck it's a work which truly truly impacts the lives of the people who need the aid the most that is why i wish you all the more luck thank you very much for speaking to times network and uh, i wish you all the luck for your mm -hmm. conference as well thank you thank you